Hey, this is Jesus Castillo and in this video you're going to learn about the select method for Rails forms. So with that you will be able to create a drop down menu like this one. You see I have a database with cat, cat names and I have this drop down where you can pick one of the cats using their name and then we can make this or favorite cat or whatever you want to do. So in this video, you're going to learn how to do this and we're going to focus on the view side of things because the controller and the model side doesn't really have anything special or anything different than any other kind of input field for your forms. So let's do that. How does this work? Well, if I go to my code here, if I will reload. So this is where we start. We want to have that select field. That's called a drop down or select field. So if we go to the Rails documentation, we can search for select. And we get this. Uh, this is the example for the select. And when you look at the documentation, you want to look at examples, you want to look at the description, but you want to also look at this. So what's this? This is the arguments or parameters, which means the same thing that this method takes. So we need something called a method and then everything else seems to be optional. So we have choices, options, HTML options and some block. Okay, so how does this work? Let's see an example. First, as you can see here, we're going to need a form. So we can submit the that drop down list to some form, right? So in the backend, in the um, controller side of things and the routing, this is going to be a post request because we're using a form. So let's create this form and the form can be either form four, which I cover in another video. So watch that if you're not familiar with form four, but for this video, I'm going to do form with, which is very similar. Now, someone asked in another video, this is a bit of um, a tangent, but it's related to what we're doing. What's the difference between scope and model in when using form with? Well, model, you're going to have an actual model. So if we had like a cat model and we assign this from the controller, then you will use model. But in this case, I'm using scope because then I don't need any particular cat to associate this dropdown menu with the cat, right? We don't have a particular cat. So I'm just going to create the scope. And the scope is when you don't have a specific model that you're working with, but you still want to create a form. So we're going to create a form. There it is. Then inside this form, what do we do? Well, here we say F for form and then select. And what do we need next? Well, in here we need the method. What's the method? The method is whatever uh, we want to name this. Okay, so this is what I mean. If we want to work with the ID of the cat, so in the controller we want the ID that we select, then that's going to be the ID. You will, you will see what this really means when we finish. Okay, so we want the ID, but what are you going to actually show to the user? We're going to show the names of the cats. So to do that, we need the other piece, the choices, right there. So for the choices, I'm going to get my list of cats, which I have from this index um, action. And here I have to do something, I have to map I uh, have to take each cat, I'm just going to call that C, 
and I want let's start with the name and the ID okay so in here I'm creating basically a multi-dimensional array where every element is going to be another array with two elements so that's going to be the cat's name and the cat's id and let me show you what that looks like if i go in here you will see this this is your drop down menu right and uh, it so show, shows the names we could actually show the ids i know i'm choosing the cat id Okay, so that's the first thing on this list. The, the second thing is what we're going to submit to the controller. And that's related to this. Okay, so let me, let me demonstrate how that works. Let me go back to name. I'm going to reload. Also, we need a button so we can submit the changes. So we can submit our choice of whatever we have here. So the button is going to be very simple. It's just going to be F submit. So that's going to create a button. And uh, now watch what happens. I'm going to open the web developer tools and I want to use the network tab. So you see there are many different tabs. We have inspector, console, debugger, network. We want to choose network and the network tab, what it does, it shows you everything that your browser is doing. So every file that the browser is requesting, every Ajax request that, that your browser is doing, everything that your browser is doing at the network level. So all of the communication between the browser and the server, you can see it in this network tab. So this is very helpful because you can see things like uh, what's happening with this image that's not loading. Well, you could see it here. Or is this file loading or not loading? You will see it here. Or what's the, what happens when I click on this button? We're going to see that here. And that's why I open this. So when I choose one of the cuts, I click save cut. This is going to submit the form. But by default, see, method post. By default, what happens with for with is it does a remote request. So it does a request by a JavaScript before reloading this page. Uh, then we can see the request here it says status 200, so it work everything work correctly the method post and we can see x h r that means this was submitted by a javascript request now you can click on this request to get more information more details which is this panel that we see here so this panel has a lot of information you don't need to understand all of this so don't worry about that the important thing to understand here is, of course, we want to know if it works, so 200 is good. We want to know the kind of requests we are making, and we want to know to what URL we are making the request, right? Um, besides that, we also want to know what happens, what data was actually sent to your Rails application. And uh, we can see that in this params tab, right? So I'm right now on the web console, which you can open in most browsers pressing the F12 key. And there are other ways to open this panel. Then you open the network tab, and then you choose one of the requests, uh, go to params tab. And this shows you exactly what is being sent by your browser when I click this button, exactly what's happened. And this is very helpful, very helpful, right? Because you can see exactly 
what's happening? What, what's the result of this code uh, as the user um, works with it? So you can see here two things that are very important are, are a direct result of this line of code. One of them is this ID. And that's why I said that this will make sense later because this ID is a name. Basically it's a name and it's this name right here. You see it says cat then square brackets ID. So that ID that we're talking about is this. And this is what is going to be shown in the params hash in your controller. So you're going to be doing params, require cat, and then your actual parameter is going to be ID. Okay. And this changes, if we change this, I can change this to Apple, for example. And now when I submit, you see these changes, right? So that's all that is. Now, this ID right here, this is the actual value that we are sending. So if I reload this again, pick the same cut, I submit it, I send it, and then we can see five. So this five is the ID for the cut, right? I could change this and then we can submit the name of the cat if I change that. So I need to reload because I changed the view, I changed the HTML. You can see that now I'm sending the name. So if I pick Sam and I send the changes by clicking the submit button, what I'm sending is Sam, right? So that's what the second thing. So in summary, this is what the params is going to look like. So in the controller, it's going to be like params ID, right? Something like cat params ID. This is this, this on the controller. Then this is what's going to be list in here. So if I choose ID, this is going to be a list of IDs for each cat, each book, each user, whatever your model is, right? This is going to be what the user is going to see in this list. And this has to be something that comes from your model, right? So if, if I have name, I have to have name in my model for that to work. So again, that's what the user sees. This is your params in the controller. And finally, this is the value that's going to be submitted when I choose something and send it. So the value in this case is the ID. And you probably want the ID. Why? Because on the controller, although I said I wouldn't talk much about the controller, this is related to understand, right? Um, you can say params ID normally what what do you do? Well you do find well sorry you would do like cat find right uh, find find something by its ID and that we allow it to easily find a particular cat that you are referring to here. So the cat that the user pick. Right? So I hope that makes sense. Um, if you did this, then what you get in the other side, in your controller, in your params, that will be the name. So then you will have to do something like find by name, right? And this will still be ID because this is that. Okay. But I will use it like this, right? Like it's right here, but you have these options to change that. You probably want this too, too much so you don't get confused when working on your controller implementation. So that's pretty much it for 
this um, particular example for the particular guide. And this is how you use the select form element in Ruby on Rails. Hope you found this helpful. If you did, please click the like button for me so I know that you like it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet so you can get more videos like this. If you want to keep learning, watch more videos right, right here in this channel right now so you can keep improving your Ruby skills and visit my website rubyguides.com. Thanks a lot for watching. I will see you in the next video.